We all know it's hard to find a GPU right now, so we'll show you how to upgrade on a budget and get up to 44% increased FPS across top games by swapping your 9th gen Intel CPU and motherboard with the new 12th gen CPU and Z690 motherboard. Hi everyone, I'm Ben Tibbles. And I'm Jeremy Threat. And this is a gaming machine powered by a 9th gen Intel processor. We're gonna take that out, put a new 12th gen Intel processor with the upgraded motherboard and see what kind of performance enhancement it gives us. With the ninth generation components, we benchmarked three games, League of Legends, CSGO, and Dying Light 2. So now we're gonna insert the 12th gen and then see what performance enhancements it has. All right, so we're gonna dig in here and we're gonna change the CPU. And remember, because it's a 12th gen Alder Lake CPU, it does require a new motherboard because it has a new form factor. So we're gonna be swapping both those out. We're gonna start with some dewiring. There's two more. Bow, that's two out. Bow, that's the final one. We are unlocking this GPU. There it is, there's that old thermal page. For this is the new Gigabyte Z690 motherboard with the compatibility for the new Intel 12th gen CPUs. That's already installed right there. And so we're gonna pop this right in here. All right, so I'm gonna set this in gently. Thermal paste. Like that is a CPU cooling block screwed down. You remember this part, we're doing it again. Plug those in, yeah? Oh. Correct. Go for it. All right, here. Uh. And just like that, there's a 12th gen processor in there and a new motherboard. 12th gen Intel Core i7 processors give you superior gaming performance. Get up to 44% increased FPS across competitive online games like League of Legends and Counter-Strike Global Offensive when compared to the 9th gen i7 processor in the same PC. Upgrade your CPU to an i7-12700K to unlock incredible increases in gaming performance. The revolutionary new design with Performance Hybrid combines performance cores with efficient cores to give you the freedom to chat, browse, edit, record, stream, and play. So, this is the way. Intel 12th Gen Alder Lake CPU is plugged into a Z690 Aorus Elite AX DDR4. And the power is designed from a 16 1 to 2 direct digital VRM design with a 70A power stage and a tantalum polymer capacitor. For connectivity, it's got PCIe 5.0 Type-C USB 3.2 Gen 2. It's got two of them. For users who need massive storage, the Elite DDR4 supports up to four PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots. The board also supports front panel USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C for modern cases. So now we're about to test the gaming performance on League of Legends, CSGO, and... Dying Light 2, baby! Oh, you gotta live. Let's get this show on zero. A resolution, let's go down that. just to make sure there's nothing else. So it looks like we got all the highest settings on, so now it's time to play. Ooh, Ooh. This is really dark and I can't see where I'm going and I'm gonna hit Q because Q shows you where people oh, are. Oh, and there's some Zambies. It's worth noting that even right now, not a lot of high action, dark graphics. We're at maybe 54 FPS, but we're hovering right around 50 and our render latency is at 21.7 milliseconds. CPU utilization right now, we're running uh -oh. about, oh God, oh God, get him. Oh, get him. Yeah, yeah, baby. Right when we started recording this, the fan kicked in instantly saying like, oh yeah, time for some heavy lifting, time for some cardio. At this point, we're dipping down into the high 40s on uh, frames per second. The render latency is going all the way up almost to 30 milliseconds. It's really putting this PC through its paces though. I can see a little bit of choppiness. It's not exactly liquid smooth motion, which isn't always what you want either, but I'm excited to see what the upgraded CPU is gonna do to this game in particular. What would I really expect when we do the swap? Clearer picture, less latency. I'm uh, interested to see if there is any difference once we swap it up. All right, well, it's my turn and I am probably going to die, but that's fine. Now we're in the 30s with frames per second, so this is high action. The frames per second has dropped as we get more busy. So the frame rate is actually a little bit higher now. Went all the oh, way hey. up to 57 frames per second. I keep finding story stuff and I'm trying to find zombies whose ass I can kick. All right, so you gotta go, but the frames per second is going to 
dropping down as you move fastly to find his UV UV frame is at 30 frame per second is at 37. So this is the action, and there has been a drop off in frames per second, obviously. But save yourself. You made it. On the monitor. Sorry if you came here for the story of Dying Light 2. That's not what we're doing. But you're in the light, so it's not dying anymore. But speaking of FPS, I think once you yeah, once you're in the action, man, that FPS kind of dips a bit. All right, I feel like we got a pretty good sense of Dying Light 2 with the 9th gen Intel. So getting back into the world of Dying Light 2, remembering how to parkour and jump off things like this. Oh, I'm glad I caught that. If I'm not mistaken, it feels a lot smoother. Well, and there's your proof right there, is when doing quick turns, things like that, there were a lot more little artifacts and juddery stops. Absolutely. With the previous CPU, but this is moving a lot smoother. I almost killed myself with that, but that's fine. <laughs> I want to find some Zambies. Okay, here we are doing some fighting, maybe dipping down into the 40s, but not by like a ton. And I don't know, just at a glance as you slice and dice, uh -huh. I'm telling you, it's smoother. Yeah, the zombie's movement is smoother. My reactions are smoother. <laughs> well, the character's reactions Hit are Q. smoother. Hit Q. Yeah, we're not really seeing the, the FPS dip below 40s. Ah! Who are you? Ooh, get him. We're nearing 50 on the frames per second, and I'm trying to find a darker space in the game. Because there's some zombies ah, in the dark. Oh, ah, he's got a hatchet or something. Wait, this is a violent zombie. Those, are, These are people. I can't see. I can't, ah. I can't focus on telling anybody about frames when there's zombies after But him. I can. So right now, with the aggressive humans and the zombies coming after him, we're dipping right about 41 is the lowest I've seen it go, which is still, I believe, higher than the lows that we saw uh, with the previous CPU. And it's worth noting that the CPU usage on this isn't topping over about 35% at any point. Just noticing a lot less tearing, fewer fractals as we're aiming and adjusting and, and looking around and running for our lives. And those, look at the textures though. Look at the sun on that stucco wall. Just don't worry about surviving and look at that for a while. There's like layers to it. That's really well done. Hey, Dying Light 2 programmers, great job. All right, so benchmarking during the heaviest combat, we went from an average of 38 to 45 FPS. That's an increase of 18%. Not bad. Do you want to move on to the next game? CSGO, let's do it. I can only play as a counter-terrorist. Counter -terrorist. So I'm a good guy. So you count the terrorists. I know, one terrorist, two terrorists. Okay, 383 FPS at this point, so. Yeah. I'm just navigating. Try, so uh, try popping off a couple shots. It went up. And so, it's a nice fire. Fire looked great. I think there's a gentleman here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that. So as I blasted him, the frame rate held kind of at that high number of like 370. Three, yeah, 398 something. Yeah. Disconnected. You have been kicked from the session. And I think that I've been kicked just out of <laughs> frames per second discrimination. You had too many. All right, now we're really going to see some deaths. <laughs> Got him. So as we get out into the light, and like every time you jump, it dips. I'm curious to know why. It's a buddy meetup. And, and again, it, 240s, two yeah. something around there when I, when I inevitably get smoked. He's ready for me again. I almost I feel it. He's so up. here in the fountain, we're in the mid 300s for the frames per second. But as he whacks that dude, it just dropped down to 289. Oh! Oh! That got to 391, by the way. And uh, sorry about your ears there. Oh my God. Take that chicken. You You're killing chickens? Yeah, man. I don't I'm like ruthless. lead with my chicken. I'm not, I'm not eating that chicken. That chicken is just to leave to send a message to the rest of the chickens. Well, you gotta leave messages for the chickens. And the message right now is we're around the 300 frames per second as we come into this shaded castle corridor. God. Dang, bot Ted. Ted. Ted hates you. Ted's got my number, man. I'm in, I'm focused, I'm in my lane. I smoked that dude. 
Overall, it feels like the gameplay is smoother and like the graphics, they just hit harder. <laughs> People's aim is definitely better. <laughs> I'm gonna let you switch out. You, you know do what? better at this. It's never time to die. Carry us to victory. Oh. That's fine. Get, get the bad ones out first. It's so smooth. There's none of that juddery skippiness that you see when you swing your weapon around to aim. It's all smooth as silk. That's, Troy's tough, man. It feels like overall, the computer itself is working less because I haven't heard the fan rev or kick on that's as it did with point. the 9th gen. Yeah. So that's one of the biggest noticeable things playing this game, because definitely playing this game the first time, that fan was a kicking and howling and a blowing. We're definitely receiving bullets faster. Yeah, you know, the 12th gen, I'm not that great on it. I mean, two games in, I think we're seeing a marked performance in both of them. And Dying Light was the one that had the lowest FPS to start with. All right, so measuring when you're in the heaviest of combat, we went from an average of around 280 to 350 FPS, which is a 25% increase. But keep in mind, we were hitting up to 800 FPS in some sections with the 12th gen, so that could be even higher. So next up, we got League of Legends. So we're gonna see how it performs on this currently built system as is. And here we go. Everything is very high, character quality, environment quality, effects quality, and shadow quality are all very high right now. These higher graphics are really putting a tax on the machine here, and you can hear it audibly when it needs the extra power and it has to cool itself down. Let's get into some action and see if we got any fluctuation. So in the action, the FPS does dip considerably. Without anything else happening, the FPS is right in the like the high 300s. But as he gets into battles, it dips into the low 200s or even the high 100s, you know, 190 occasionally. The thing that I think is going to be interesting here is the render latency is very minimal, right? It's about two milliseconds, maybe a little less. But in games like this, latency is a killer. Latency is what'll get you. So I'm very interested to see if upping the power on the CPU will bring that render latency down even further. Oh, oh, oh. I died. Do you wanna swap? Yep, sure. Frankly, just from the difficulty I'm having getting through the tutorials, my guess is yeah, especially if you're competing with the best people in the world, a millisecond, I'm about to die to this bear guy that I didn't even see up here. Yeah, you might want to get out of there. Yeah, I'm going to move. he is on you. Yeah. Oh. And as he follows you, the frame per second is dropping. Yeah. So. We are at 240 FPS, which is pretty constant, 40% yeah, GPU and usage. And there we just, for, a, for a, the briefest of seconds, we dipped below one millisecond response time, which again, Crucial. But when we did dip into under one millisecond render latency, it was not too much happening on the screen, so that's understandable. But in the high action scenes, you definitely want to keep it as low as you can possible, right? Absolutely, because if it takes too many milliseconds to render, you won't even have time to react to what's nope. happening because you won't be able to see what's happening in real time. At that point, you're not getting into the game, the game is getting into you. We're back on League of Legends, and let me just start this off by saying there's been a change. There's been a, a slight improvement in the numbers. So as he's going, as he's running along, we're seeing in the 500s, which again is double what we were seeing this game achieve with the ninth gen processor. CPU utilization is ridiculously low. 7%. 7, maybe, I've seen it maybe spike up to 11% every once in a while. And again, GPU utilization is struggling to get past 40%, even in the heaviest of combat. Which is, this is pretty pretty much the heaviest of combat. The frame rate is right now, okay, it's dipping down into the 400s as we're getting a lot of things going on in the screen, which again, still well over anything that the ninth gen was producing. It's definitely a substantial difference, especially when we enter these high combat, oh! Oh, I might oh, need to oh, exit yeah, the high yeah, combat it's okay. zone. It's, a, it's okay, it's a learning experience. It is, it is. I mean, there we go into the into the 500s. All right. Yeah, now we just zoomed in, so the, the frames per second definitely increased substantially upon zooming into the gameplay. 
but now I'm zooming out. We definitely saw numbers that spiked as high as 1100 frames per second, which is just banana sandwich. We're seeing comfortable numbers in the 500 range, which again is easily double what the ninth gen was producing at about 250 oh. frames per second. It's and, okay. it, and it's still over 500 frames per second, even when you die. <laughs> well, we told you there could be up to a 44% increase in gaming performance, but considering our FPS went from 240 to 450, our increase was a little more like 87%. Again, these were just our numbers, but wow, what a difference. I thought it was kind of incredible. The improvement in performance in the numbers that we saw for something that was so relatively easy and so relatively inexpensive and let's face it, just a lot easier to get your hands on. It was an incredible boost. If you want to get your hands on one of these incredible processors and motherboards, you can click the link in the description below and go buy one or you can get one for free. So we are giving away seven bundles that include the i7-12700K processor, Z690 motherboard, and a download code for Dying Light 2 for free. Just click the link in the description below, the other link. A lot of link clicking, but hey, there's free stuff involved, so click away. Thank you so much for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe for more great content. I'm Jeremy Threat, And I'm Ben Tibbles. Cheers, and happy gaming. Build something, why don't you? No.